Paul Keshe is a young beef farmer and a trader at Ewasongi Road. Despite the lack of rains, he has been able to maintain a healthy herd. Paul advises farmers on some of the various ways livestock farmers can prepare for the drought. Number one is reduce the number of cows. That is, don't overgraze. Number two, make sure where, where your animal are is already fenced, fencing your land. Number three, make sure you deom your animals almost frequently after every one month you deom them. You spray them with a dip, dipping them. Give them some other mineral like uh, salt so that they can add some weight. Another one. I want to say to these people of uh, our Songiro, me being one of them, plow your land and make sure you plant boma roads in your, in your farm. Why do I say boma roads? Boma road, although boma road, they can add more uh, weight for your cow than the indigenous grass. I have an experience myself, I do plant boma roots and I sell some and I, 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 I remain some for my own use. During this time when there is no rain, I tell these farmers, you have to identify. When there is no rain, sell some of your animals, leave a few of them that we are able to manage them during that time to feed them and be live in a very comfortable life. Wale wakuna shamba ambayo wanaasa panda inyasi. Wafonye juu chini apande. Kwa sababu sasa tunaona sasa unaona sasa hii kiangasi kali na mna hii unaona hii inyasi ni green. Ukienda kutoka inje ya hii inyasi unakuta mahali hata hata imekauka sana. Kwa hivyo ninaambia hata watu wapande nyasi kila mtu ambaye ako na shamba apande nyasi kwa sababu hitabaki ikiwa sasa ni yeye ako na faida kwa sababu atakuwa na faida ya ngombe yake kama ana ngombe tutapata wale wako na ngombe watakuja basi kwa huyo mtu na yeye atapata pesa kupitia ile nyasi kwa hivyo ninaambia watu wapande nyasi kama hii kwa sababu ukijaribu hata kuangalia kwa hii kiangasi namna hii na unaona hii nyasi ni green na hakuna mvua ilinyeshea si tunasema basi pande hii Some of the major problems facing beef farming in Kenya are high temperatures and reliable rainfall overstocking and pests and diseases. Most of the regions in Kenya where pastoral farming is carried out experience very high temperatures. These include Kajiado, Narok, Laikipia, Turkana and others. Also, the high temperatures make it impossible for pastures to survive. Hence, the pastoralists are forced to work for long and hence the overall effect is unhealthy animals and poor quality meat. Also, the owners of ranches have to look for extra feeds from other areas and even spend more to get to feed their animals. You have a type of grass that uh, you will cut and put into your store. That means proper planning because you know you will use that grass when needs arises. So um, the bells about uh, I mean the boma roads and the type and other types of grass these are things that uh, these are grass that uh, you can plant any time of the year they are not like this one where we are depending on uh, rain rain that is the long rains and then we plant once the grass are over in two three months then you are back to zero you know those ones when we have small rains you can look at the rain patterns and then you introduce those ones so it has an advantage better than this one. Overstocking is a major problem facing mainly pastoral communities. This is where the farmers keep more animals than the land can sustain. Most of the pastoral communities take cattle as a sign of prestige in that the more cattle you have, the richer you are. 
This in turn causes a struggle for the little available pastures and water. The result of this is unhealthy animals and low quality meat. According to Mwaneki, feedlot systems ensure high quality meat. Because you see, when you do feedlot, you, are, you, can, you won't sell your beef locally. You sell to big hotels. Like, for example, I know a place where when you do feedlot, you sell owl carcass at 700 shillings per kilo. But if you sell a cow which has not been fed, you sell to the maximum price is 400, 400 shillings per kilo. So if you compare the cow from thin road and the one which has not been fed, also the price is so different. You see, when you feed the cows, you see now, for example, when you let the beef cattle to walk for a long distance, the muscles when they walk, the muscles will be, I don't know, I don't know how it will, it will be tough. So the meat won't be tender. But the ones which are rock, they don't walk, they just eat and rest there. The meat is very tender. Diseases are also very common among beef cattle farming. These include East Coast fever and foot and mouth diseases. These diseases lower the quality of meat, mostly because when the animals are sick, they tend to eat less. Farmers spend a lot on treating the animals. To make matters worse, in pastoral communities, due to the large herds of cattle, diseases spread faster and most of them die. So many other diseases, including um, we also have the the ticks. The ticks are very common here. So as a cooperative, we've already introduced what we call uh, uh, the animal service center, where we, we take our animals through. Maybe you'll have an opportunity to see the animal service center. So that one is where we we take our animals for vaccination and other animal-related uh, services, including uh, cattle, spray race. So we have so many diseases um, around this area. We also have the foot and mouth disease. Um, that one is uh, can, is ve also very common. Yeah, we also have CBPP. It's very common here. So sometimes we gain, uh, we get the vaccines from the county government. Um, of course, I don't need. I have the right experience. Um, you know. We, all of us are masses, so we grew um, looking after this cattle. So if you just look at uh, the behaviors of an animal, of a cattle, you can easily th tell that this one is suffering from this particular disease. So we don't need vet, although occasionally we invite from the Ministry of Livestock in the county government, but in case of uh, extreme ends, whereby we, you know, we have some outbreaks and we might not tell which one, which one, which one really is this. But majority of uh, the diseases, we can tell by ourselves. Kama ni mkulima mwenye ameweka ngombe ya maziwa na mwingine ameweka ngombe ya nyama, hakuna tofauti kubwa sana. Juu kama ni magonjwa yenye inamshika ngombe wa nyama ndio tu yale yanashika ngombe ya maziwa. Vo ngombe ya nyama ni kama kwa magonjwa wa shikwi na magonjwa sana. You see like kama ni ngombe ya nderi you see kama kwa mfano akule leo akule saa hii jioni ile chakula alikula unaenda unatoa so hiyo ngombe ni weak sio strong kama ngombe yenye ya beef cuz ya beef akikula hakuna mahali unaenda kutoa chakula so mwenye anaweza shikwa na magojo haraka sana ni ya nderi uweze linganisha na ya beef Meat quality and consistency are important in ensuring consumer satisfaction. Quality of meat is affected by the genetic propensity of the animal, how the animal is reared, and the nutritional status during production. Mwaneki says if a beef enterprise is well managed, they are definitely good profits to reap. Ukulima ya nyama wezi ringanisha na ukulima ya nderi. Ukulima ya nyama iko na pesa. Ujawa isikia siku yote nyama imeshuka mbei. Kila siku nyama inapanda. Lakini unasikia mkulima wa maziwa na ramika. Leo maziwa tulikuwa tunauza 30 bob, kesho, 40, siku ingine, 15 bob. So unapata ukulima wa maziwa inaenda na season. Kama kuna nyasi mingi, pesa inarudi chini ya maziwa. Wakati wa kiangazi ndiyo, beya maziwa iko juu. Lakini nyama haina season. Kue ni kiangazi, kue ni mfua, nyama mbei ni ire ire. That's the yon di advantage moja ya nyama. Mimo wengi kama hapa naro kwenye wanavanya beef farming, wanaanza na boran. Unajua boran ni munyama mwenye 
anafumilia magojo, anaweza tembea distance mrefu kutafuta chakula. So hiyo ndio kitu tunaita kama unaweza hiyo inaweza tunaweza sema kama ndio foundation ya breeding. And then anakuja anatafuta ngombe mwingine mwenye kona frame kubwa na ni wampifu. Anaweza tafuta cemento, anaweza tafuta bandinangas, anaweza tafuta charolis, ngombe kama hizo wakuja crossbreed na boran. So akisha crossbreed atapata njao ndrama yenye itazaliwa itakuwa na big frame. So kuuza ngombe yake itakuwa rahisi sana. Weight gain itakuwa itaongeza kilo haraka sana. So unapata ngombe ya mwaka moja, mwaka mbili iko na 40 kg plus. Some of the solutions that can be implemented in the beef farming industry are establishment of cooperatives. Most farmers opt for small-scale farming because they lack the required capital to venture in large-scale farming. Cooperatives should be established to offer low-interest loans for farmers and start large-scale farming. Also, this will help farmers to purchase extra feeds for their animals to boost the quality of meat and also this will enable them to acquire better breeds of beef cattle. Distributing experts to beef farming areas, these experts can educate farmers on the best ways to increase beef production. Unfortunately, most farmers in Kenya keep low quality breeds of cattle which produce low quality meat and are easily affected by diseases. The government should introduce high quality breeds which are more resistant to diseases and produce high quality meat. For more on beef farming, join us next week, same time, only on KTN Farmers TV. To watch a rerun of this show, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at KTN Farmers TV.